Like, I was almost having to sneak watch Drake and Josh. What? They're the worst kids ever. My parents were like, we don't want this going on in our house. <laughs> Posting like three videos a day, going live for four hours a night. I'm sorry, what? Are you guys ever going to do like a reunion? I mean, if people want it. I am okay with being sad. Yeah, me too. Because you guys are beautiful people. You guys didn't need to talk. I had to work for it. People would walk by me to talk to you guys. So I'd be like, hey, what, what's going on with that? Four years old, I even would sit in bed and pray and I'd be like, God, let the name Josh Richards be known around the world. Sit here, watch my anime on my phone right now. Oh, I'm sorry. What anime? All right, guys, so we'll see you guys all next time. I've been sitting here trying to wrap my head out to open up this episode. I want it to be very special. So I thought it would be funny if I have my cousin, who's extremely uncomfortable in front of the camera, talk about today's guest. Uh, who's our guest today? Josh Richards. And what, okay, and? Uh, he's a TikTok guy. And? He's a good looking dude. Okay. Hot girlfriend, I don't know. Okay, get out of here. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode with Josh Richards, the man with a hot girlfriend. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Dude, I'm very excited <laughs> about this episode. All right. Uh, I want to tell them how we first met, though. Because, yeah. Because yeah, how yeah. we met was actually, I, didn't even, I don't think I even told you like the full like length of it. I don't know. I don't know. Let's dive into it, though. So I don't know where were we coming from. Where were we coming from? We were I don't it was know. A, it was a plane ride. From, was it from New York? Yes, it was after the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was. It was yeah, it was, yeah, it was. yeah, yeah. So we went to uh, to go see the Jonas Brothers, and we're on our way back, and we're not on the first class because it's it's booked. Right. And I see you, and I'm like, oh, I want to go say hi, but also like I know when people are traveling, I'm like, I don't want to bother people. Mm -mm -mm. So I'm like, I'm not gonna bother them. I'm like, if it's meant to be, then. I'm that's when we were in line at customs and everything too, yes. right? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. And I'm like, I'm not gonna bother. If it's meant to be, we'll like see each other at like an appropriate time. Because sometimes when you meet somebody at a place where they have to get going, it's like really uncomfortable. Yeah, right. Yeah, you yeah, gotta yeah, yeah. like make sure the vibe. Well, good. you just don't get like a full hello or anything either. You yeah, know? it's like a half-assed <laughs> hi and bye. Yeah, it sucks. It, I don't want to do that. No. And so, <laughs> and so I see you, and then now we're we're at the same gate, and then all of a sudden I get a notification. They're like, we just upgraded you guys to first class, and I was like. Nice. nice. I was like, yeah. this is pretty cool. This is where I'm like, all right. And then next thing you know, I'm sitting right next to you. Right next to me. What are yeah. the odds of that? So slim. So Very slim. slim also, right? why the fuck did I pay for my first class seat then? Yeah, <laughs> just got upgraded. There's upgraded. Man. It was just upgraded. And I was just like, and Jessica texted me too. She goes, yeah, I put you on the upgraded program. And I was like, oh, nice. Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. And we got upgraded. And uh, dude, we, we were hitting it off so much that you got up to ask Belle yeah. about it. Because we were like, nah, nah, nah. Because it, like, it was just like the same thing. And then at one point, you're like, nah, bro, you're bullshitting. And I'm like, no, you could go ask Belle. And this is why I knew like me and you were going to be friends because you're, <laughs> this is the funniest thing I've ever <laughs> seen. If you're ever in first class, you have your own little like section, right? Yeah. And usually, Usually, nobody enters your section. Mm -hmm. It's not a thing that you do. Nope. He could have easily gone to Belle, entered her section, and been <laughs> like, hey, is this true about him and his dad? <laughs> you went into somebody else's booth, and your ass was right in their face, and they turned to me like, what the fuck is... What the fuck? Is, and, then, and then he's like jumping on his toes, so he's literally just throwing his butt, and he's like, he keeps at, and then this is the worst part. Belle can't hear him. No. So no. she's like, what? And he's like, do you, you know? And then, and then so finally, I'm trying to readjust <laughs> and keep finishing with the story at the same time. Yeah, it was a mess. And it so finally, the girl looked at me and she goes, "Dude, get your man." And then this is the best part. I, I literally go, Josh, Josh. Get your ass out of her face, bro. And then so he finally goes around the girl. I, I say hello, and then I was like, "Your your uh, your awareness is just like ours, bro. When we're like caught up in the moment, we just want to go." And so I don't know. I think our first moment of hanging out was just eight hours of just like hilarious laughing, like, yeah, nonstop. Yeah. That's why I was very excited about this podcast and get, and to get to know you in in a, in a whole deeper level. I wanna I wanna peel it back from the very beginning. I know I got mm. to know you a little bit on the on the uh, on the plane, but I, I wanna I wanna dive deeper for the people that. Don't get to know every aspect of you or, or maybe you haven't watched the Best Friends podcast. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. So uh, how go. did you even get started? Like, was it TikTok? And did you, when you jumped on TikTok, was it something that you knew was like, oh, this is a platform that's going to drive me like crazy? Are they watching this shit? Hey, hey, if you're watching this video the day that it was uploaded, listen to me and listen to me quick. If you're in Los Angeles, I have a show, my first show ever, opening it up with some stand up and then we're taking it to the podcast. It's not something you're going to want to miss. Listen, listen. Don't miss this, okay? Do not miss this. Get your tickets. Link in the description. I'm going to see you. Brea, improv. 
today, not tomorrow, not next week, today, November 9th. Get your tickets, link in the description, or just walk up and buy. And also, I know it says on the website, you have to be 21. If you go there, show them your ID and you're 18, you're good to go. Don't worry about it. Yeah, so um, it started for me on what we know now as TikTok, but it was Musical.ly back then. Um, so I was 13 years old and I'd always had like a huge interest and love for social media at the time I was watching like team Albo if you remember they were like Wolfie raps David parody They were like big youtubers bigger in Canada. I would say specifically. Are they you from, from Canada? Yeah. Yeah from outside Toronto Very nice. My mom's from Toronto and I lived in Ottawa for six years. Oh, okay, sweet So yeah. team Albo is from Ottawa the My guys nice. that I used to watch on YouTube all the time. What was their what was their stuff like? Um, they did a lot of like they would do like uh, challenges as a group, kind of on YouTube. They, they oh, were they like were kind of like a sideman. Yeah, exactly. Got yeah, it, they were like cool. Canadian sidemen. I would got say. It, got it. Got it. Um, so they would do these fun challenges and whatnot, and I just very much fell in love with the idea of like creating content with my friends and being able to do that on a daily basis. Um, so you know, me and my buddies would go around our town of. 16,000 people and film little videos if that was us going and doing like air horn golf pranks at the golf course at in our town or and you were if, at, what, eight, 13 yeah we were 13 12 doing this this is exciting <laughs> bro fun. because like we didn't get I didn't get this we didn't have like cell phones when we were 13 yeah so imagine what kind of mess I would be creating if I was able to like prank people or, like, <laughs> like like that would be a little bit too much like, yeah have, has there, when you were 13 was there ever a prank where you're like oh we went a little too far on that one yeah yeah, I think the uh, the air horn one was fun, but I think we ended up taking it too far, and not on purpose. Um, Could you give us an example yeah. of like? Okay, no, please. Yeah. We'll get to the Show example. us one that's like a normal one, and then one that's taking it too far. So you know, a normal one if. We're if we're out there and we see a bunch of guys on the course and they're drinking and smoking and we give them a little air horn in their backswing. Usually it's pretty chill. It's a little laugh. They're like, "Haha, you little fuckheads, get off the course." You know what yeah. I mean? That's it. Now for this one, we were right at the putting. Like we were at the green. So this is the end of their shot. They can't like re tee up here. This is like where it counts. And it's an older Ugh. group. You know, it's an older group. I'd say they're in there. 60s, 70s. Oh, you can um, give them a heart attack. So, yeah, no, they're yeah, taking this very seriously. They're taking this seriously. <laughs> this is their Sunday. You know what I mean? They wait all week for this. Yeah. And um, they're they're getting up to putt, and one of my buddies gives off, gives off an air horn, and then they're looking over there. Another one gives off another one, and they keep kind of going back and forth, and they're, like, confusing these old people a lot, right? Because they don't know where it is. They start cussing. And I had gotten the... A red iPhone at this time. There was like an iPhone for the iPhone 7, I think it was, that came out in the color red. So I had a red iPhone, and I was hidden in the bushes <laughs> trying to be discreet with this bright red iPhone. And the older gentleman sees it. And so as he Great sees eyesight it. eyesight for an old man, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You eliminated his hearing, so he needed to lean in he on his vision. He needed to lock in. He needed to lock in. And his senses were definitely uh, dulled, and you'll figure out why here soon. But as soon as the old man turned to me, I noticed that he was putting with one arm because he only had one arm. So we were really ruining this man's day. He chases me down, throws the club at me, you know, didn't Aww. make it very far. Um, but nice. <laughs> Thank you. you. Didn't even get hit you. Like, <laughs> I wish he would have gone at least to hit you, you know what I mean? Oh. Yeah. So um, oh. that one, I think, you know, we went too far. And he's running towards me, and I'm on my phone. I'm like, guys, he has one arm. Stop with the air horns. And, like, one of my buddy gives off another one. He's like, hey, and it's just like, oh, boy. Oh, so that no. one was too far, for example. Yeah. Yeah, um, that one uh, <laughs> took a turn. <laughs> That's uh, that's fucked up. Was he going yeah. like this from far away? You naughty kids! No, because too far? it was like <laughs> it, it was definitely a shoulder. It wasn't so much of like a you know arm stump. It was more of like from the shoulder <sighs> down, completely gone. Um, I actually saw him again when I went to golf uh, about two months ago. <laughs> two in, months ago, in, in my old town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in the clubhouse, um, getting her around for me and the boys and. Uh, my buddy comes in that we were filming the air horn video together. He comes in. Caleb was his name. And uh, he comes in. We're talking. And as we are talking to each other, we see the man walk in and walk right by us to go up in line next. And we just are looking at each other, exchanging looks. Because there's no way this guy remembers us, but we remembered him. So. Wow. Why Dude, did you that? remember him? Um, I think it probably had to do with, you know. Missing limbs, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, I just it's hard to miss. Yeah, hard to miss. You, know? you ruined yeah, yeah. his Sunday. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, that's but, that's really bad. Uh, yeah, that's actually really bad. 
Shout out to that guy, though. Uh, okay, so you're around 13. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you make fun of people that have no limbs. I wasn't like necessarily my niche, but yeah, yeah, um, was, you know, uh, that's definitely what puts was you making on the videos. Mat. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so we were making videos. Did just that as video a go viral? Did you ever post Not it? Not at all. Didn't go viral. I don't even but know. But you still if we, posted it. I don't even know if it ever got. No, it got uploaded. It got uploaded. That's yeah, 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 yeah. A little fucked up. Well, we thought it was funny. Yeah, fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Know? Okay. <laughs> Again, we're 13. That's <laughs> hilarious. Um, but, you know, from there, had, like, moved on to just, like, my sister threw me in a video. Um, and that was on sister her Sister older or younger? Younger. Younger. She's a year, 18 months, year and a half younger than me. Fair enough. Um, and so she throws me in a musically video. To us, it, like, goes viral. Got 15 likes. Like, no likes. But to us, I was like, holy shit. Let's go. More people than in this house have liked this video. <laughs> and um, from there, I, you know, went and checked out the comments. There were three of them, so it didn't take long. Um, oh, and I'm, I'm reading through, and one's a bot. And then the other two are these girls, and they're like, yo, what's his username? So I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> let's go. What's up? Uh, so I start my own account, and... From there, just like really fell in love with the the numbers game of it all. Like my dad was a math teacher. I always just had this like infatuation with numbers. I loved it. And I loved entertaining and kind of being that center of attention class clown kid at the same time. So it was really like bridging two of my favorite things into one place um, where I felt like I was able to go at like a building an account in like a growth hacking type of way. And then at the same time, be able to put out videos where I'm entertaining people. So just like instantly fell in love with the ability to make content. Um, so you went, you went right away hit the, like you were more like, I got to read this algorithm and look at the numbers. Yeah. See. What? Okay. So your, your dad taught you numbers. How did he feel about you doing these pranks and like these videos online? Um, I think it was a, it was an unknown for him. Like it was something that was, obviously so past his like generation of going and doing social media and again like you know he was my coach for a lot of sports so that's how we connected like mm -hmm. it was he like, was a hands-on dad yeah yeah for are sure are you guys still tight right now yeah Best super friends. close to my family oh like, yeah that's the thing that you're asking yeah oh, yeah, that's yeah, so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so super close to my family like I always say like i i really come from the most blessed household i could um, and my parents supported me through everything I did. Like if that was, you know, sports or business ventures or this social media that I've been doing. Um, can I ask you a question, uh, from a man who's been in your shoes? Not a lot of people get to walk your life. So mm. if you could right now, um, a genie or a God comes in front of you and okay. goes, Hey, you get to pick the life that you have now with the money, the fame, the women, the access to these trips and these relationships, or you have your family and you just do like very average things, but you get to spend time with your family way more. Mm. Which one do you choose? Yeah, I love my family and all, but oh, no, no way. <laughs> I think I, I, you're cutting your family out. Yeah. Damn. So to your like, dad, you like, would say it like this. You'd be like, speaking of multiplication, I'm cut. I don't know. I don't know anything about multiple division. Maybe. That would be multiplying. <laughs> Speaking yeah, like of subtracting, <laughs> subtracting, yeah, minusing. <laughs> As you like, know, I didn't do well at school. <laughs> oh, you would cut your family out, dog. I thought we no, were gonna have listen, like a listen. moment where you were like, "No, my family." My family is super important to me, and I like they're they're some of the only people that keep me grounded. Like my sister is out in LA with me for the next year because she's like going to take a year off of school and kind of like get to work with me, get to work at my production company. Oh, just awesome. get to How long have you guys like, been working together? Um, now it's been th three months. How is that? Good. It's great. Like, yeah. It's good. It's good. You hear the high <laughs> yeah. voice. Yeah. It's good. It's good. <laughs> My parents are listening to this. Um, no, it was, it, it's, it's, it's really been awesome. I mean, my, me and my sister are super close. We've always been pretty close, um, at least after, like, I feel like grade eight when we kind of got past, like, teasing each other and whatnot. Um, we've, we've always been really close. I think because we were both close in age, we eventually became a team against my parents in a way, which made us closer because it was like, oh, we're going to cover for each other if one of us is sneaking mm -hmm. out or, like, going to a party or whatnot. Because, Damn, like, you snuck out? I wasn't, I wasn't like big into sneaking out like that much, but I, you know, I'd like, I'd go out and like smoke with the boys or something like that. Like Yo, something hey, like that. Did you ever get your chill. ass bit? A bit. Bit? Oh, <laughs> we're, we're really turning into <laughs> well, like. Hold on, hold on. By my, my family? family? We'll, we'll, or we'll the... ask that question later on. Have you ever got your ass beat? <laughs> um, you know, my, my parents never were like, 
It's not like I lived in an abusive household. Nah, but, but like my 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 dad might slap me around a little bit and be like, "Hey, get your head on right." Or like if I tried to challenge my dad, my dad would be like, ha, 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 "Bring me outside, throw me to the ground." And it was like, "All right, I very much knew I was like, all right, this this isn't a match for me." But there's no, no you know. way at the age that you're sneaking out would I sneak out. There's no way I wouldn't even be able to focus on whatever. And you went out to smoke. Dude, no way. I like <laughs> no way. My yeah. dad would come in like ISIS, bro, ready to just rip off everyone's head in front of me and record it. Put it on Facebook Did for all my other Middle sleep? Eastern friends. What? Your parents didn't sleep? Didn't sleep. Yeah. They slept like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just ready, bro. Ready for that. <laughs> and he snorts you. Like, <laughs> just fucking ready for it all the time, dude. Dude, my parents would even threaten me. They'd just get really quiet and just stare at me. Mm. And then that silence made me picture what they were going to do to me. And that scared right. me more. <laughs> right, that was, okay. more that okay. was way more frightening. I had a window in my room. I was in the basement. And I was just like, oh, I can just you know, climb oh. out of the window. And then I was home free. Mm -hmm. Like, they were asleep. They ever catch you? Nah. Nah. One time, my dad was like, why is your screen out of your window? And I knew he knew. I knew he knew. And I knew he knew. And I was just, I was just like, what are, you, wh what? What are you talking about? And he's like, the screen of your window's popped out. Why would the screen of your window be popped out? And I'm like, man, that's a, that's a good question. We got to figure this out. Hey, can I ask you, why are all kids so stupid when they talk to their dads? I don't know. It's hard to There's... think of something on the spot. Because I used to, I didn't think out so much, but my sister, I would cover for her. Mm. And like, on the spot, you just don't know what to think. Like, you're like, you know what I mean? You have to scavenge of something and you sound so dumb. You're just like, ah. Oh. You ever smoke yes. with your dad? No, 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 no. My parents know that I, I smoke. They just like, my dad's not a big smoker. Like I, my dad's more someone that would like have a beer with me. You know what I nice. mean? Like he, he, he likes to drink more than he does to smoke. Like he's, he says he smokes and it's just like, he's out. So. so would you, if your kid wanted to either drink or smoke with you, which one would you want to push on them more? Um, not to push on them. Like, yeah, do, I, I don't know do if I'm pushing them, either. But like, you know what I mean? Like, which one would you more be more comfortable of your kid that's like 17, 18? How old were you when you were? Running like first you're... smoking? Yeah. Um, I mean, I like. I guess like I probably like, first smoked in my life when I was like thirteen or something like Jesus that. Jesus Christ! Um, but Canada that, gets down. That that <laughs> that that wasn't like. It's not like I was like every day at thirteen. It was well, like I tried honest, it one time yeah. at thirteen, then I didn't again until I was fourteen, and then there was probably like three months from that age of fourteen until the next time I I did it again, and yeah. then it was like slowly a thing, and then grade eleven was probably really when I like was like okay, you know I like smoke on the weekend or whatever, but um, my I feel like for me, I kind of want to run it the same way my parents did. Like my parents were a little bit more I think open about drinking. Now they still you know told their scary stories to us to make us like realize we had to be responsible around it but they also like introduced it to us i think at an earlier age where it's like we knew our limits and we knew like it was a social thing drinking is like a social thing you do with people that you love right yeah. instead of like something you do to go escape and like your mm. problems so i think like that presentation is a good thing and weed was not a thing that was allowed in my household okay, like, okay my parents they say canadian smoke is it's illegal it's there, legal right? it's legal so it's not really that looked down upon no, was it legal when you smoked it in school? It got legalized. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, when okay. I was in high school, it wasn't school, legal I, for me. I think it was legalized by the time I was in high school. Um, but I think like my parents, you know, they were never like, "Hey, this is a household where it's okay to smoke." Like, not at all. If they found out I was smoking in high school, I was grounded for like probably two or three months. I wasn't doing anything. Like, I was going to school and coming home, and that was about it. Got it. Um, so there was definitely like that strict kind of rules set in my house. But I think that was a good thing because I think every kid wants to defy their parents in some way or like be a little bit rebellious. Nope. You know, you didn't want to be rebellious. At Bro, all. I don't think you understand the ass whipping that I would get. I mean, my dad's mom was like growing weed in the backyard of their farm. You know what I mean? So different lifestyles, I think. Different yeah, lifestyles very different. to come from. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know. I we should think get your dad and you and me and my dad. We should go out and just tell stories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, sure. The whole time my dad be like, you did what? what? <laughs> Where were you, man? <laughs> what do you mean screen wasn't in window? What the, you bolt it with two by four. Now you can't leave. <laughs> yeah. hey, so when did you make that change? Like when was the time when you were in Canada, you're making videos? Videos. Maybe some of them start to get popular. When was that time where you realized, kid, this is something for me and you're going to leave Canada, come to L.A.? Yeah, um, I think probably about a year into it. Um, and now I always had that dream from the beginning, I should say. Like, I always have been somebody that wanted to be, like, known across the world. Like, it was something that I prayed for. What, for what, though? Like, acting or just, just you wanted to be known? 
I so it was <clears throat> it was it was always different for me. I mean, like you know, when I was four years old, I even would sit in bed before night and pray, and I'd be like. God, let the name Josh Richards be known around the world. Like, I know it's going to be... It was more like an affirmation than it was even Amen. anything else. It was just like, I know this name will be known around the world. And when I was four years old, I thought I was going to be a superhero. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, yeah. like, I believed it with every ounce of being that I had. And then, you know, as I got a little bit older, I was like, I'm going to be a professional hockey player. That's how everyone's going to know me. Mm -hmm. And then it was, you know, came into... I'm going to, like... I'm going to start this hockey brand with my friends. Like this t-shirt line is going to be the biggest line for like hockey apparel in the world. I'm going to, that's how the name <laughs> will be known. And then it, I found social media and I was like, this is it. Yeah. This is how everyone's going to know the name Josh Richards. And then, um, yeah, I, I very quickly like kind of was posting videos every day trying to find like, what would my schedule for social media be? And I got into posting like three videos a day going live for four hours a night. I'm sorry, what? It was three videos a day, four hours a night alive. What would you do? What were you doing? Um, and, and what age were you? This was when I was 13. 13 so, wait, 14. you were this doing right live before rep. like live was even like a thing? Yeah, this was when it was called Lively and it was a separate app from Musically, but it was like oh, associated with the, your mm -hmm. Musically account. Lively. Yeah. So, it would send a notification to like all your followers on Musically that you were live and they would be able to join. So, and that was kind of the way that I was picking up followers because Musically at the time had been like, it was now like a pretty oversaturated app and at the same time was on its decline. Like all the people that had blown up from it, like the, you know, Jacob Sartorius, like MagCon crew. Yeah. Had oh already, my God. Yeah. Bro, you just threw me back. <laughs> right? <laughs> so wait, question. When Matt MagCon uh, was going, how old were you during that? 12, 13. Right? Yeah. And yeah. they were like, they were around your same age, like around like maybe, maybe they were, they a They were older? like a little older than me. They were probably all like four years older than me, but not Jacob. Like Jacob's the same age as me. Jacob Sartorius was in that stuff and he was the same age. He was huge when he was like 12. He was like one of the biggest people. Huge, huge. Yeah. Uh, uh, sweatshirt song was yeah. really big too. Yeah. Did yeah. you ever think about doing music? Um, I mean a little bit. Like when we did the diss track, me and Bryce, like we did Still Softish. Then we're like, we're going to get into that. Yeah. So you go to LA. Yep. Um, what, how many followers do you have in a, in like, what was your game plan? Like when you come to LA, you have to obviously have a game plan. Did your parents come out with you? Did you, who, who was like supervising you at a young age? Yeah. So I was supervising myself, but I just finished, um, the lights out tour is what it was called. And it was like me, Griffin Johnson, Jaden Hostler, Love Anthony, like Quint, like all the boys pretty much from Sway. Quentin wasn't a part of that yet. Was but Sway created yet? No. So this was pre-Sway, but this was, you know, all of us going on tour together and uh, just going around the States, like doing like very much like a meet and greet tour situation. Um, and from that point, the tour ended. We still had like a month and a half left of summer. I went out to L.A., hung out with Bryce, like introduced the boys to Bryce. We all started like kicking it together, like hanging out at Bryce's, throwing parties, filming videos. We were like, Bryce, like, like get on this TikTok stuff because he was doing like YouTube and wasn't doing tiktok at all I think at he the was time. doing you now or something like that right he was doing like live stuff too or no no not that was where he started but that's not where he was when we were hanging out with him when and we how were did hanging you guys out with connect? him he, uh i just knew him from like events like like you know we'd go to like playlists or whatnot and like i'd see him at these events he'd walk by i'd be like yo i see what you're doing dog keep it up and i'd be like thanks and that was it that was our relationship <laughs> you know what i mean I every that. event he would say that to me and that was about it and then i got to la and i was like yo can i come come through to your crib like let's let's hang and he was like yeah sure bring bring the boys do whatever so me and like three of the friends all went to bryce's started making videos got him to do videos and we all just started making videos together and it like kind of became a little group um the tour manager that we had went on tour with had completely ripped us off and kind of like done one of those like you know we're young and not very experienced, Naive, yeah. 17, 16 oh, years old going on this tour. We're like thinking that this guy's going to like take care of you, take care of us and also like stay true to his word, mm. which like, you know, you're kids. We're kids. We yeah. didn't know any better. We should have signed contracts and like had if you stuff don't in me writing. Asking, what's his name? I'll beep it. I won't. <laughs> um, his name. I don't know his last name, but it was. Oh, I, th I thought it was. No, he, that's a different man. I've had my fair share of managers that have been. I'm beeping out all those. Make sure we beat those up. Um, but um, yeah, that was it. Was it was a different guy. Um, but yeah, so that experience happened to me where I like looked around and me and my friends have all been ripped off off tour, and I was like, what? What the hell? Like this this industry of social media is like the wild west. Like yeah. no one is in here. You know, there's no like union for people that do social media. Yeah. There's Crazy. no agency that is like even looking at us yet. Like WME, UTA, CAA um icm like all those places 
did not look at social media kids from TikTok yet, maybe from YouTube and whatnot, yeah. but no one was looking at TikTok. So, so managers could just be like, say whatever. And, they can and make up their anybody own Anybody could say they were a manager too, yeah. right? So um, at that point, I was like, I'm going to start a management company. I'm going to go to LA. That's why I'm going to go to LA. That's going to be what I'm able to do. I'm going to go build this management company, bring all the boys into it, build out Sway House with those guys, and then be able to sign a bunch of kids and do my own content at the same time. So then I went and we signed like 115 of the top TikTokers onto Talent X in like the span of like seven days, just through like my network of people on TikTok. Mm. And, and your age was 17. <clears throat> that is incredible. You're, you you became a savant in this. You you walked in, you understood the room, got burnt, and not only were you like, I'm gonna avoid getting burned, but yeah. I'm gonna do my due diligence <laughs> to make sure that no one else gets burned. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. It's an that's amazing great. it's an amazing journey at such a young age. Thank you, man. So yeah, that's why I decided to like move my schooling into online, go out to LA. Um, and that was yeah, I was still I was just starting my senior year of high school at that point and came out here and we started Sway, me and the boys, and the rest is history. Let's go. That is mm -hmm. unbelievable. What was the feeling like when I mean, you're living in Canada, you're like sixteen, seventeen, then you went on tour, like right before yeah. you moved to LA. Like what was that feeling like? I mean, it was it was pretty surreal. <clears throat> For me, it was crazy because I feel like growing up in such a small town and then, you know, like everyone in my town knew me. Everyone in my town knew me as Josh Richards. They knew me as a kid that either like they played a sport with, they go, I go to their school, friend of a friend, you know what I mean? But yeah. like, you know, kind of everyone in your small town. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so when I kind of started getting a following on social media, if anything, it's not like I got treated better. I would have been treated worse. Like if people didn't like change, we're from a small town, you know, people yeah, don't like that. So, so true, it was yeah. like, people don't like when other people are finding their lane. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So everyone, you know, is making fun of me and doing whatever. And I've always said like, you know what, if I wasn't the kid doing social media, I probably would have been the kid making fun of the kid that was doing social media. So I don't you like, you look like the out. kid that would be making That's fun of the I, kid. <laughs> I, I don't like hold, hold on to it. That's I don't so like, you're like, I get you. I love that. You know that too. I, I yeah. respect you for that shit, bro. I respect you for that shit. Thank you. I'm like, you know, I look at my homies and my friends that I was saying, out with in high school and I was like yeah we would I would have been the guy yeah. I would have been the guy um so you know it's like for me the biggest like surreal moment was just like finally getting to see the people that were behind the comments and likes every day in person that's cool like mm. that was so crazy to me because like no one in my town asked me for a photo they they all yeah. knew me you know or they had a class photo with me already like <laughs> it was like no I didn't get that attention so like then going and doing that tour and having, you know, a thousand, two thousand to three thousand people come out and be like screaming your name when you're 16 years old, 17 years old. Like I was like, what is what is this right. feeling of adrenaline? You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. How did you keep yourself grounded? I mean, at such a young age when you're having all these kids screaming your name and the fact that you were saying in a prayer like, hey, God, I want everybody to know. And you're watching this actually come to mm -hmm. life. It's very hard to keep a grounded look at things when things are just not, I'm not saying you didn't work for it, but it's like it feels like it's given to you. Yeah. Did you ever have like the imposter syndrome or like did you ever what, what, was there ever a down moment that you're like, this is the part of my life where I have to find this type of knowledge to get over? Like what, mm. what was your hump? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, like I definitely just probably got a little bit of a big head and then got burned a couple times and then was like, oh, yeah, so this is why I need, like, you know, certain friends around me to keep me level-headed, or this is why I need to make sure I'm, like, going back home and visiting my family, because my f I would never act like this under my parents' roof. Like, mm. it was just, uh, like, certain things like that. So, it so was, you learn quick. Yeah, I think, you know, like, in, in the crazy thing about it is, like, Sway was only nine months long. Like, and it feels like it was, like, two years of us being together, but we only lived in that house together for, like, eight, nine months, really. Mm. And then the house, like, we had, like, the Texas situation happen where, like, we were there and got, like, charged for possession of weed and all that stuff. And, like, the house kind of disbanded a little bit and, like, people started, like, the house kind of split up, went in its different directions. Like, five of us were living together. The other four were living together and stuff like that. So, um... Are you guys ever going to do, like, a reunion? I don't know. I don't... <laughs> I don't know if it was. Well, like, I mean, I feel like that's a good question, right? I, like, I don't no, know if it was like if it if there's like a reunion that's been warranted. You know what I mean? I I would like that reunion. Fair, fair. Yeah. I mean, if people want it, then fuck. It yeah. would be a big TikTok for you guys to do a TikTok all together again, right? I, I just think it's like, I think because for you, it's from the outside, it's like 
damn, like what happened? Like where does it all go? It's kind of like when you're watching a cast, an ensemble, but then they split. Like the fans still fuck with all of you guys, but you guys decided not to fuck with each other. Yeah, well, I don't think it's that we necessarily don't fuck with each other. Like a lot of us are still friends. I oh, think it's okay, just that you. like we all had different ideas of what what we wanted our lives to look like. Mm. Like a lot of people just were going in different directions. And then obviously there was like heads clashing and stuff like that too. But I think it was it wasn't just one or the other. It was a mix of both. Right. What what do you what do you see yourself like doing in the next two years? Now that you've you really like made your mark. Like, mm. wh where, where do you see yourself taking it? Like, wh where is your dreams located? Yeah, I mean, for me, what I really enjoy with social media is being able to, like, create, like, this comedy sketch show that I'm doing right now, for example. Like, I, I love being able to leverage my, my audience and, like, my social media to be able to do things that aren't necessarily directly in that social media lane. Like, to now have, like, a production company that... I was able to start and have a three year first look deal with Amazon prime and like the unscripted division. Like that wouldn't have happened if I didn't have my social media presence and yeah. was able to build that up. So that's really where I kind of want to put more of my focus into is like creating these different, either digital series or like creating these documentaries or scripted TV and film. Um, Cause that's, that's just been like, I haven't enjoyed myself more than what I have enjoyed, like putting together this comedy sketch show and getting to like, go into the writer's room for eight hours and work on writing those sketches with the writers that we have on and then going in acting and playing a different character every single day, three times, four times a week. I'm in a different character. Like that is so much fun to me. Um, so I, I don't think I'd really want to do anything else but that. I love that. Would yeah. you, would you ever do live performances of it? <clears throat> I think I would like to find out what is the live show. Yeah. I don't know what that is yet, though. You know what I mean? I yeah. don't know if it's just, like, taking the sketches and doing them live or if it's more, like, in, like, a Dave Chappelle, like, Chappelle show way, like, setting up the, ske the sketch and then, like, playing it. You know what I mean? Or if it's more of, like, a doing something completely different and going in and just like talking like kind of like a smart list kind of thing like i i don't know what the i don't know um what you're gonna do but for some reason i had like this little vision of like a skit that's played on the screen mm -hmm. and it it will continue on stage so you set up the everything and then like the the set of where you have the stage set up to look like right, right, right. is the continuation of that skit in that scene there. It's like diving deeper. Yeah. I like so that. So it's like that a reverse cool. of like, like what they've done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So basically it'd be like you guys getting in a car and going somewhere and then now the car's on stage and you guys are like in the car like. Mm. Right, and it's right, all, right, right. It's like a yeah, live yeah, performance. Yeah. I don't yeah. know why. I just saw that. I thought I'd throw it at you. Yeah. I think what was so cool for me to about this project was like. The whole goal for me was bridging the gap between social media and traditional media yep. and like really making this feel like something that when you watch it, you'd be like, what TV show is this from? Yeah. But it's able to live and do well on social media. So when you go and watch the YouTube form, which will be 15 to 20 minutes, uh, you slowly start to see the fun we had with like Easter eggs, uh, linking sketches together or like the, the through line of a sketch being or, or of an episode being a... Uh, play on like time where every single sketch is happening at the same time in a universe and like so for example like we have a character named parkour parker who is jumping off a building in one of the sketches and by the end of the sketch he hits the ground and you kind of slowly realize like oh shit he was falling throughout those all those sketches and I you see that. him in the background of other sketches and like oh, or wow, like we'll have like cool. a time period where it's like um the the first sketch starts off and goes up to god and then god like unplugs the tv kind of like you would have to do when you were younger and like count to like five to <laughs> reboot it or whatever and then plug it back in you know what i mean and then that world restarts and it's like now we're going through like from like uh 500 bc to now the present you know what i mean so mm -hmm. like just playing with different through lines like that too which are really fun but mm. you get to appreciate that when you go and watch the 15 20 minute version where it's that full episode but also can take down each sketch individually put it on a tiktok where it could live in a minute and a half two minute sketch version as well me and reed are actually talking about That's projects cool. like this and i I, yeah. I find it fascinating that you want to go straight to like youtube or like a platform that's free because now with the whole SAG strikes and streamers uh, like Netflix, Hulu, Paramount having to up their charges and I'm starting to realize that it's, 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 
the the lane for them is getting more and more narrow mm-hmm. because when you have people like you putting up such high volume content for free, at what point is it going to be very hard to compete? Like a lot of people would rather, like especially the younger people are going to watch your stuff. Yeah. What made you want to not sell it and just keep it for free? What, what, what was the thought process behind that? To be able to be the first person to hopefully achieve this if like I'm coming from social media and then being able to test out a show on my social media that then is able to go to a streamer I've kind of opened up a new lane in like pilot tv it's like now you're able to they did this with movies though in like they would put out their there's a lot of big directors and writers that started out on YouTube. They put out their movie mm. on YouTube mm-hmm. and they got their well, give me They'll an example. They'll do like a short, you mean, on well, YouTube? Yeah, well, no, no, there's movies. Oh my god, I, we were just talking about this actually. Like it starts as a short and then they make it into a movie? Uh there's a, there's a I ju- I'm so sorry I'm blanking out, but there was a lot of people that did that with movies. I haven't seen that with a TV show though. So mm-hmm. you would be the first one to do that. The crossover on on, on a TV show. The only thing that I, I, here's a, okay. If you do cross over, are you doing it because the little version in you when you were younger, like, oh, cool, I crossed over to like main Hollywoods. I could go work with Key and Peele. I could go work with it. But in my brain, it also falls back to like, dude, you're getting more viewers than the real Hollywood movies and TV shows are getting. So like, what is the, the, the thirst for it if you're getting a viewership? As an entertainer, for me, I don't give a fuck what platform it's on. Mm-hmm. I just want these people to watch what I'm creating. 100%. So you're like, to me, it's like, I don't want, because I know your pull, bro. You're you're fucking huge, and your pull is at a, at a at a level that very very few people get to walk in. So to me, I find it very fascinating that you're excited about selling it to Netflix or selling it to Paramount when you yourself hold the same amount that they probably have in subscribers. There's always been this dream for me to be able to bridge these two worlds, and mm. I feel like they just. They're getting closer and closer, and we're seeing it in different ways. Yeah. But I think that in the specifically like TV and film and acting world versus like social media entertainment world, we haven't got to see them collide together yet super well. We've seen attempts. We've seen like, you know, really big social media influencers go and jump into movies. Yeah. But a lot of the time, the talk around that movie ends up being really negative, right? Yeah. And it's like, I'm not blaming the social media influencer. I think a lot of times they get set up for failure. Like they're getting put mm-hmm. into a movie where they're There's expected a lot of, a lot to of lead chefs it. In the kitchen. There's a lot of chefs in the kitchen. They're being thrown into a movie where they're expected to lead a film yep. on their own for yep. the first movie they've mm-hmm. ever done. Like they've never even like guest starred or supported. They haven't even probably done anything, acting class ever. before coming yeah. into this film. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe they did it to prepare for this film, but they did not do it prior. And then now they're expected to be able to lead. That's huge. Huge. Like you got to be the person that every single person is coming to watch that movie for. Right. Mm. And then do it well, which is like you're putting too many expectations on someone that's never really done this before. Now, you know, if you set that person up to be, you know, the fifth, sixth biggest character in the film, then everyone's going to come into this movie and it's going to be someone else's movie. And then they go, oh, shit. Wait. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Is that Josh? Is that Josh Richards in this? Oh, shit. That's pretty cool. That's dope. Instead of going into it with negativity. Right. Yeah. So like. That's kind of what I want to be able to do with bringing this show to people's attention, having them see it on social media first, getting to have, you know, comfortability with seeing me on screen, seeing me act, all these things before they then go and see it on a streamer or someplace like that. And I just think the ability to merge those worlds, it's it's interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. It's, it's, like, it's like solving it's gonna, it's a puzzle. A big, big blow. Right? I, so I think more than like necessarily like concerning myself with like viewership on Netflix versus like my own socials or Peacock versus my own socials. To me, it's like, this is like my next puzzle to crack. Yeah. You know? That is smart too to get, yeah, to get your audience used to seeing you act like this new adventure of yours because people like tie you to what they're used to seeing you. It's like a character from Friends. You can only picture them in as Ross. Like Ross is Ross and that's it. Yeah. When you see him in other things, it's kind of weird because you can only hear Ross, you know? Yep. So it's like you need to get people like... Yeah, to just understand. Used to you're like, this is what stuff. I'm doing, and I'm gonna be different than just myself. You yeah. know? Are Are you uh, scared of being typecasted as just an influencer? Uh, I don't think so. I like. I think that as people will hopefully see this this sketch show and other projects that I I want to work on that I'm able to to get out of that. But I think you know if I have if I have the right skills, then I'll be able to I'll be able to get out of that. 
I think you will, bro. Sure. You know, I, and I don't even, in, I, in no way disrespectful when you're saying this, I don't think it's your talent that's going to get you there. I think it's your ability to, like, correct yourself. Mm. Uh, I notice that the people on top are, are very much the hardest workers, but they also don't make the same mistakes over and over and over right. again. So I'm very impressed of what you've got done now, and I'm very excited to see where you're going to be in, like, 10 years from now. Thank you, man. Uh, sp speaking of, like, stuff you're on, mm -hmm. you're on a, a podcast with Dave Portnoy. Yes. How did you guys even yeah. come about? Yeah, um, so that that really came from the diss track, I believe. Um, me and Bryce did that diss track, still softish. Um, Do we jump into that? What, if you don't mind me asking, what yeah. is the diss track like? Who was it aimed towards? Was it real? Like, what was this about? Yeah, it was it was definitely real. Um, it was just all revolving around like the typical diss track. I feel like motto. It was like a friend of mine went for my girlfriend you know what i mean and i was like all right let's make a diss track on him so um <laughs> that's all right so, that we know like, what we gotta do here we know <laughs> what we have yo, to yo, do yo, 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 yo. let's take it back for a second who the fuck out of you very skinny white model looking friends are like you know what this motherfucker needs <laughs> a diss track bars <laughs> yeah that was me i was the one that that was like makes we should sense, diss him sense. we should diss this kid um <laughs> are you guys friends now or no the guy trying I, to like I move. feel like, yeah, I like it's just like so in the past. You know, we don't, yeah, we but don't like give a shit. Yeah, but like the dude moved on on your girl, bro. Yeah, but like, I feel like I'm I'm doing well now. Let's I don't, go. I don't Let's got go. no, I, yeah, there's no like malice there. You know what I nice mean? Nice word. I was trying to find one that would like make people be like, oh, wow, Damn. that's why he he's really moved on. Yeah, yeah, he's smart. <laughs> he's gone. He's he doesn't really? give a fuck. Wow, look at this Malice? Guy. He's evolved. Malice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, I think we're chill. Like me and Chase, we got no issues. Um, but yeah, so, so made that diss track. Um, started trending on Twitter. Dave saw it. Um, saw like my name and my face and Chase and us were popping up in his Twitter feed and he just made a tweet, tweeted out and he's like, why are these wiggle dickers showing up on my Twitter feed? And I was like, why this is, is what? wiggle dickers was the token name for TikTokers um, by Dave Portnoy at the time. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So great Fair name. Enough. Great name. Really like kind of like threw us in a box, but it made sense. Um, and I was like, all right, I got to reach out and like get this guy on a live stream you know what i'm saying like let's like get talking to him so we reached out to his team um i ended up getting on instagram live with him he came on my live like i guessed him we had like eighty thousand concurrence or something crazy like that on the stream and i was just explaining all the drama to him and he was just like kind of responding to it reacting to it we ended up like making fun of chase a bunch um and then it's just so funny, bro. Which is how a friendship starts, you know. You have a you have an enemy together. Common to enemy. <laughs> I just seeing it from Dave Portnoy's point of view. Yeah. Like this old ass dude who's yeah. running a huge company is like, I'm gonna talk to this little kid. Like, well, no, it's the fact that I was he, like, I was like was 18 make... at the time or 19. Oh, at it's the not time. that bad. Yeah. I guess yeah, it's not yeah, that yeah, bad. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay. No, he's making fun of TikTokers, and then he's like, you know what? This could be something. Yeah, let me talk to this. Guy. <laughs> what was your overall thought of him before, and then your thoughts after? Um, I mean, I always liked. Barstool. I, I always really liked Barstool. Just like I feel like it was kind of like big in our high school. A lot of people would send yeah. their clips around and their videos around. Um, so I always thought he was really funny. Um, and then just kind of getting to meet him more and more, I think I just like I ended up thinking he was even funnier. I, I really fell more for his content, I think, after I started working closely with him. Um, I also just think he's a really intelligent guy. I think he, he knows what he's doing. I think he knows how to keep people uh, engaged in his content, yeah. and he's able to have everyone have an opinion about him. Like He's one of the most polarizing people probably in entertainment. He's, his, his confidence is that... Uh at a level where it's like you talk about it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like there's some people that like walk around and you just get irritated when they talk because you're like, well, what the fuck do you have to say about this shit? Right. But then you want to listen. So it's yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, but what like, do you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you guys get to talking about doing a podcast together? Yeah, so after the live stream had gone really well um, and we just kind of had good natural banter back and forth. Yeah. Um, He's like, I, damn, these wiggle dickers. <laughs> <They're good." laughs> <laughs> I get it now. Um, I understand. But I think it was Snapchat. Snapchat had hit us up and asked if they wanted uh, to do a show or, or if me and Dave wanted to do a show with Snapchat um, where like we would talk about drama or, or something along those lines. And uh, I got on the phone with Dave 
and kind of was presenting the idea to him and very quickly he was like you know like i don't want to i want to do stuff at barstool like if we're going to do something i want to do like with barstool yeah. and stuff and i was like okay 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 like we're trying to figure it out and um landed on a podcast and he liked the idea and then we went into negotiations and then like four months later came out with bfs so you Thanks. shoot it while you're out here and he's in new york yeah how does that work? Does it ever throw you off that you're like looking at a screen? I mean, a little bit. I think that's something that we're like actually focusing on right now to make better is have us all be in the same room or just trying to schedule weekends where we're able to bank like one or two episodes. That's yeah. What, and yeah, then it just makes more sense. Just get like me in the middle get, or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or find a week, you know, where we're all in Miami or a week yeah. where we're all in New York or LA because we all do travel and we often will intercross in our travels as well so it's like let's is it find a, a weekly show it's a weekly show and do you guys always have guests or is it just like once in a while guests we want to always have guests so we try to get guests every week okay, so that's cool. that's the goal um so yeah it just it you know especially on a show that is a little bit focused around like timely manners where something needs to be yeah. present that's in the zeitgeist do like this. that becomes a Stock. little bit difficult of yeah. yeah building it up or having you know a, a three episodes banked but it's just like working on finding evergreen content or i guess that's evergreen that could come on at any moment and it would be a good one and then finding ones that are you know in the now you need to post it and just scheduling right. it that way because yeah, you guys are super topical right about whatever like drama or anything that's yeah. happening on tiktok or right yeah, yeah yeah for sure so then thus far like out of all the content you've created you've done pranks you've done your tiktoks you've done the i know you're really excited about your sketches the podcast which one's your favorite type of content to create now the podcast was probably first before i did the sketch show really but yeah i i really enjoy doing that podcast it's so much fun i love being able to talk it's great I sit down for an hour yeah. hour and a half and just shoot the shit with two people that i i love being around like there's there's nothing better than that mm -hmm. um so i really enjoy it uh i think it gave me a great demo it gave me a great audience barstool's unreal like the people in that kind of fandom are great all the stoolies are awesome um stoolies they're, they're they're the greatest dude i go to a bar and they just like <laughs> stoolies. they offer me beer it's awesome you know what i mean they're like, hey, you want a beer and i'm like yeah i want a beer and then i yeah. sit and i talk with them for 20 minutes and they're just cool people like all of them are cool people so you know i was just telling this to my friend uh because he, he 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 experienced something with me and he's like oh this is really cool what's your favorite part about living this life and i was like the fact that i get to talk to so many people like mm. I used to be the kid that would just talk and annoy people, right. but now it's like there's a lot of people that want to talk to me back. So I'm like, ah, I get to talk to them. At <laughs> they the want to listen to you now and everything. Dude, right? the other day I was in an elevator and I was like just having a bad day, and I wasn't angry, but you know when you have a bad day, you just like quiet. Mm. It was the first elevator ride I've ever taken in my life where not one person said anything on it, mm. and I was like, damn, do people not talk in elevators? Because like <laughs> there's no shot, there's no shot yeah. I could be in an elevator and not talk to somebody. He came over and he was like, do people normally not talk on elevators? And I'm like. Yeah. yeah, when do you talk in an elevator? He's like, I always talk in the elevator. <laughs> always. Like, okay. That's like a very dad thing. I think. <laughs> always. That's a very dad thing to, to do. Like my elevator? dad cannot have silence around him. He wants there to be conversation <laughs> in an elevator. If we're in a lobby somewhere, he's talking to someone at a grocery store. He's talking to everyone. You don't get scared my of dad missing talks out. To everybody. I I am someone that I would say is. Okay with being silent. Yeah, me too. Like, I, I'm okay if it with comes that. and I want to talk, if I'm feeling it, if I'm in the elevator, I'm like, ooh, I want to talk to you. We'll talk. But if not, like, I'm good with just not talking whatsoever. You know why? Like, I've been looking. Because you guys are beautiful people. You guys didn't need to talk. People come up to you and be like, hey, what's up? And like, I had to work for it. People would walk by me to talk to you guys. So I'd be like, hey, what, what's going on with that? Like, and so I would get to talk to them. But dude, yeah, I have like one liners that always work in elevators. Mm. Like, I would look at them. <laughs> in elevators. Okay, okay, no. We're in an elevator. I'm We're in an elevator line. right now. Ready? Let's yep. go. <clears throat> and just, you don't know me. You don't know yeah. me. Yeah. Can you hit four or five? Yeah, absolutely. Five? Yeah. Right. First one to fart wins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is pretty good. Because you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> that is pretty good. They just, they just look, look at him. Uh, one time, I'm not gonna lie, I was I was with my boy and I had to fart. That's where the line came from. Mm, mm. And I said it for the first time, and he started laughing, and I just ripped it. Ooh. And then I looked at him, I go. I won. And then he started dying of laughter. But yeah, I was never able to fart on cue since there, but the, the line okay, itself yeah. doesn't know. That'd be it'll... messed up if you were farting on cue for other people to be in the elevator with nah, you. Nah, I think that's pretty skillful. I wouldn't be mad if right. somebody does that. Yeah. A forceful fart feels less gross than... Or a, than 
an unplanned fart, right? Yeah. If, yeah. You, if you if you were like, excuse me, could you hit five? You're like, oh. And then you're like, this guy's fucking gassy. Yeah. This but is if you're gross. like, yo, check this out. You're like, fucking skills. Like, yeah. how did you get yeah, control? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. I go to the building and be like, hey, uh, you had a guy riding your elevators and he's farting. <laughs> the guy would be like, George, yeah, we know him. Every, every time Pretty he goes sweet, to right? <laughs> Pretty Nice guy, sick. huh? <laughs> Pretty sweet. <laughs> it's like that kid so that could fun. like burp the alphabet in junior yeah. kindergarten. You were like, yeah. that is the coolest trick I have ever seen. <laughs> Teach me your ways. Please. I was actually more thrown off that he could do the alphabet at a young age. I was like, this guy's not dyslexic. <laughs> this is actually, you could do two things at once. Uh, okay. Have you ever, this is, this is going to sound kind of like all over the place. I actually want to do something with you. Jessica, could you grab me the Lebna and the Flaming Hots? I want to bring a little piece of my world to you. Okay. So <laughs> in, my, in my culture, we have this thing called Mesta, and we call it Lebna. It's yogurt. But Not wait, yogurt. Wait, 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 sorry, sorry. It's That's Mesta, not, but you call I know, but it Lebna. Tells it's like, you so know, it's called Lebna. Like yogurt. Yeah. And in a series, we call it, uh, I just forgot the word. Uh, the name of the style of yogurt is Lebna because it's the way they process it. Mm. It's, it's considered kefir cheese. So it's thicker than regular, like your Yoplait yogurt. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it's like more like Greek yogurt. To be yeah. honest, dude, yeah. that That's was the I was best. Saying, like, like the word yogurt kind of throws you off, but it's like a thick. It's almost like a thick sour cream. Like I like mm. Greek yogurt more than I like like yo plat or whatever that shit's called. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see. Do you like spicy stuff? Yeah, I do like spicy. Do you like stuff. flaming hots and yeah, like all yeah, okay, tacky, cool, 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 you know, cool, 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 cool. We got takis, takis and we got the other things. Uh, so do you? Lime. Okay, which one do you want first? That one or this one? I'm gonna I'm go with the chili lime. Those are really good. Yeah. Okay. Those are really good. Okay, cool. Chili so, lime's great. <laughs> here, 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 here. You're about to dip this in yogurt. You are. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you go. It's, Alone? It's fine. No one's gonna join me? I'll do it with you. Yeah. Well, that sounded weird. Okay. The Lebna is just not for me. I'm not a sour cream or Lebna here, type of gal. Grab. It doesn't taste like sour cream. I, 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 you could do one or two, whatever you're. I'm gonna go to. <laughs> Damn, crazy dude. Okay. So I want to show everybody this because mm. I'm actually excited. And give your honest. I'll give an honest review. Thank One you, bite. Sir. Everyone knows the rules. Wait, wait. Before you try that. Ooh. Is oh, that like a good amount? That's a great amount. That's okay. a perfect amount. Have you ever done like flaming hot Cheetos and cream cese? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Why the fuck yeah. would you do that? Like, Why would you ruin the moment like that? No, no. Does the that guy ruin was going it? into no, like. I want to make sure like he's tasted that so he understands it's similar to that. Versus Yoplait. It's more like cream cheese than <laughs> I'm putting her in a headlock as soon as he leaves. I won't think Yoplait and I will think cream cheese. Okay, no, no, no. Just think of Lebna. Okay, I'll think of Lebna. <laughs> do, you you want, gonna, do you want water just in case you don't like it? No, are you going to get yeah, a little yeah, dip sorry, in I'm here? So I'm excited. waiting I'm so for sorry. you, man. Okay, okay, okay. Let's okay. do a little cheers, dink. Cheers, cheers. Dink. Dink. ASMR. It's nice. <laughs> It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, bro. I, I, dude, I get so excited when I show people this. You get so stoked. I feel like you could put like some like seasoning in your yogurt, though. I don't disagree. The fuck did you just say about my <laughs> lemon? I get, I get so offended. I go, what the fuck? <laughs> like, if you put like, I don't know, what would go in there? Like to make but, it more like an onion type of dip. Like if you, you know? took taco seasoning. And threw it in that yeah. Lebna and oh. then mix it up and then put the chili lime chips in there. No. Just saying. No, that's perfect a the way it is. I actually am I'm quite offended that you guys are actually even telling me it. Could you try this actually if you don't mind? I don't mind. Oh, please, come here. Try the Lebna. What's your guys' relationship? Uh, me and Chris are business partners. We own Cross Check Studios together. Could you cross check this real quick? Oh. <laughs> no, when you it. Thank you. Now, would you add anything else to that, or did you just say that's like they could use some like spices in there? You no, know what I'm saying? Great. Thank but you. In the like, well, if you're already doing the chip though, you already have the spice. That's yeah, what I'm saying. but it's like, oh, so the taco thing is a little weird. I'm not gonna lie. Taco See, season? You have you guys never had like? Have you guys what? <laughs> have like... you guys never had like taco <laughs> dip? Have you never had like cheese salsa sour cream in the sour cream and che cream cheese mix? Thank you for you, coming like, on. Throw oh a little God. taco seasoning in there. It's delicious. You're Try it out. You're looking for like a buffalo. Sunday night onion football. Dip. That's an onion Watch. Dip. You're talking about onion mm. dip. Yes, thank That's you. That's not See? onion dip. Yeah. If you onion added dip. onion mix in that, that'd be really good. Sure, you could put a little garlic powder in, a little onion powder maybe. Like the. You I know, like the your onion business partner mix. more than you. Yeah. Okay. Because he's plain. Me and you need to hang out more. <laughs> I mean, you need to hang out more. You have good people around you. you have very I, good I people got people you. that know their Lebna around me, you know? 
So what's new exciting like in your business life or personal life? Um, what's the show called? What, the, what's the, the show's show? called Read the Room. Chris is yelling because he wants me to say the title. Do you guys like the name? Read, Read the, the room. room. I love Read the, the room. I actually find that to be very good, and I'm very hard on names. Thank you. That is actually a re read the room. It's a good sketch. How name, is that right? not something that's it, already been named? Is it read the you, room? You came up with it, didn't you? No, Katie did. Katie, came up with Katie it. did. Shout out Katie. Shout yeah. out Katie. Ooh, Katie. I love Katie. Yeah, she, she killed it. Is it called Who's read Katie? the? She works at Crosscheck. Is it called read the room because you kind of have these Easter eggs like hitting in the sketches with like the guy falling down the things and he comes in the different levels? I think that's like, yeah, that. And I think another one was just like we feel like a lot of these characters that are like the weird characters in the show. It's like there's a lot of times when you're watching that that you think someone would look at the guy and just be like, just read the room, bro. So, Josh, mm. <laughs> so tell casual. me about, about, we didn't just make a cut at all. Uh, tell me about your dating life. Yeah. Are you single? Are you in a relationship? I'm in a relationship right now. Yeah. Not Is yeah. it public? Is it not public? Yeah, it's public. Uh, it's uh, Gabriela Mora is her name. Gabriela, Spanish. She is Brazilian. Brazilian? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, now, can I ask you something? Does it? Do, do you like being single? Okay, I can't ask you that because you're in a relationship. So yeah. So watch what are you it, trying to like, do, man? Fuck? Set me up, make me go home and have an argument? Well, it was easier in your relationship for your work when you're in a relationship mm -hmm. or when you're single? Um, I think that... There are some things that are easier and some things that are harder for both. You know what I mean? Like, I think being in a relationship, I love a lot because it, like, doesn't – I don't have as many distractions, I think. Like, you know, I'm not going out as much. I'm not going to, like, a club as often or going to party as much. Um, and I also think that my girlfriend really, you know, helps in, like, motivating me in certain ways. Like, she just makes me feel good about myself and, like, my content and, like, getting up in the morning and doing things. So if you find the right person, I think, you know, that's key, too. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, How'd you guys meet? I met her... Um, I just saw her on Instagram. It's not, like, a cute story. I wish it was. But <laughs> I, I DM'd her. I was like, hey, yo, what's up? <laughs> hey, yo, what's up? <laughs> and then she responded for some reason. And, yeah, uh, oh, I wonder what reason that is. Uh, Good look, successful. I don't know. It was probably. I, his, his manager turns around. He goes immediately. Our business partner, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, yeah, I DM'd her, and uh, she was coming to L.A., and then I invited her to my birthday party. Um, started hanging out with her and just, you know, inviting her to random shit. Like, I'd be like, hey, me and the boys are going to Dave & Buster's tonight. You want to you wanna roll up to Dave & Buster's? And she'd be like, yeah, sure. And then, you know, I'd turn around and text all the boys and be like, all right, we're all going to Dave & Buster's tonight, guys. I need to <laughs> fucking get a group together. Because um, I wasn't going to go to Dave & Buster's without yeah, yep, yeah, the, yeah. the date. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, so just started, like, bringing her out to, to little things like that. And uh, trying to get a vibe for her. And I thought Dave and Buster's was a good place. You know, like you got to be able to be competitive a little bit, but still have fun at Dave and Buster's. Yep. Like I I'm getting to see how, how you roll, like what's your banter like? Um, Cause all those things are important to me, I think. Uh, so yeah, got to really get like a good feel. Of, uh, what's your like, guys' favorite game at the, at Dave and Buster's? We usually go right to the basketball. Which Ooh, one? Which, yeah, one? which one? You know, the connect four. <gasps> Dude, how that's good is that game? Dude, dude, that's our that game. game. That's our mm -hmm. game. Oh, what? Because Connect Four is our favorite game. It's and then so we went good. there and it's both. Like, ah. Yeah, we play Connect Four basketball probably like the whole time. That's what we use our entire card. Double yeah. date? But yeah. a wager. Who wins? Oh, we're going to kick your guys' ass. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're, you're, you're getting serious? dusted. You're getting dusted. No, no. Shorty, shorty, shorty. Not. You're getting Simply dusted. Not. You don't even know. Bro, bro. Like, <laughs> like, like, I'm not even kidding. It's going to make you rethink everything yep. in your life. All right. Everything. You guys right. are gonna find to find a new game. You know? Okay, I'm but this ready. loser has to break up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It's like the Squid <laughs> Games of like. <laughs> That's terrible. Your love yeah. dies. Oh, Your love oh, dies. Not so confident anymore. Huh? I'm ready. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else that you guys want people to like be focused on while you're? Um, I, I would say like the only the only other thing was like. Got like a cool little uh, spot in a film with A twenty four, called wow. yeah, called Dream Scenario. And what a uh, flex, dude! Just casually at the end. That's with Nicolas Cage, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicolas Cage, A twenty four, one of the greatest production companies ever. Yeah, uh, A twenty four is great. Mm. Yeah, especially in a day and age where like movies are not hitting as much as they they used uh, once to. Once were, yeah, yeah. yeah and A twenty four is they they're keep hitting. their they're yeah, keeping yeah, yeah. the shit, bro. They're doing yeah. it right. So wait, wait, wait. How the hell did you just bring this up? Wait, <laughs> what's this? What's this film about? Did you already shoot? Yeah, we already shot it. We shot it last uh, November, so almost like a year ago now. But um, 
yeah, we shot uh, it in Toronto and then the, uh, mm. another little bit in LA. Now I don't have like a huge role or anything like that. I have a, a smaller role in this film, obviously. But there are uh, no it's small a roles. fucking huge step it's forward. So, it was so much fun, man. And like one of my uh, few scenes um, is actually with Nicolas Cage. And then it's like me, Nicolas Cage, and Noah Centineo. That's where I became really close friends with Noah. And now like we're tight. But we all get to work. And that was like, that was the first scene that was set up for me to film with this movie it was the first scene that i filmed in a movie that wasn't you know like besides like two little things i did on like independent films when i was 16 like those was like my first time kind of getting in a, in a, in a movie right yeah. and well, walk me through it. how did you even go about getting this audition like how? yeah 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 so that was it was it was very much through like agency got the got the audition and everything like that or so you had to audition ask. it wasn't a given it, it was role. a given role it was a given role for that nice. yeah 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 um, straight offer. Yeah, straight offer for that. And then when Damn, in, dude. And, How did you uh, like working with Nicolas Cage? It was really cool. I mean. Bro, I was like, what, grow up watching what, him. Yeah, like, yeah. What, what can you what's not he say? Like? What's what he can like? you not say? I mean, he was, he seemed like, you know, on that, I think they were coming up at the end. So I think they'd been going like pretty hard. And they were also filming this entire movie on old school film. So mm. if any of the, you know. Anything gets corrupt, anything gets messed up, certain even like lighting thing. They didn't develop the f film until that night. Like they would go and develop the film yeah. after the whole day of shooting that night. If anything was wrong, they had to reshoot the whole day. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think they'd been through like a lot of filming and I think like maybe he was a little bit like, you know, getting to the end a little, a little tap. But mm. this guy was like a great energy, like was very much in, in character in his scene. But, like, was still, like, cracking jokes and able to have fun with me and Noah. And, like, we didn't know the guy at all really going into this. But made it feel comfortable. Made it feel easy. We all got to have a really good time. Uh, That's was, cool, bro. It was fun, man. What does it feel like to be working with people that used to, like, watch on TV and, like, or movies? Or? Um, do you get nervous? Or do you, are you like, nah, this is it. I got it. I think I get, I get nervous leading up to it. But then when I'm there it usually drops away. So, like, you know, the night before in my hotel room, I was sitting there like, holy <laughs> shit, man. Like, it's, it's in, like, eight hours. Were you, you know? scared like, of, like, not hitting your lines and shit? I think it was more just, like, it's just, like, being in front of that camera, like, having everyone looking at you while you're doing this, you know? Like, it, it was just, like, holy fuck, this is high pressure. Like, mm. I'm going to have two people that have been in very successful films looking at me when the camera's <laughs> also on me in this film. It's like, that's that's high stakes. It is high stakes. I was <laughs> just about to use the exact words, high stakes. That's high stakes. Especially with the camera you're rolling off of. Like the right. director's probably not like too nice about yeah. like hey how don't many fuck like, this up. yeah like, we're not yeah. doing twenty days yeah, like, like yeah. let's go let's go we have you to know? develop this shit bro <laughs> <laughs> what was your uh, character like um so it was the the whole premise of this film is Nicolas Cage is playing a uh, a college professor and he ends up appearing in people's dreams not like he's traveling while he's sleeping but like people are just seeing him weirdly in their dreams and some mm. of them are like normal some of them are a little creepy weird and like everyone's having different experiences right and it starts becoming bigger and bigger like throughout his school people are seeing him some people that have like never even seen him before in their life are starting to eventually see him in their dreams which is physically like impossible like you, yeah. your brain can't imagine a face you've never seen we yeah we were shot well yeah. i was just saying so, that is that true is that facts i'm pretty yeah. sure that's facts no, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i mean we could be you know maybe we need a mythbusters to come and figure comment that down out. below if that's not but, a fact i would love um, to know yeah so you know people are starting to see him in their dreams and and whatnot and it's feeling like very real for a lot of people and it's going on and he becomes almost like this phenomenon throughout the world where like now he's like one of the most famous people, you know, like everyone has seen him before. And then um, there's a lot of ups and downs. And I don't want to spoil it, but essentially uh, they end up finding a way. The world ends up finding a way to, you know, monetize this. So if people are able to go into people's dreams, they're able to influence people's dreams, right? They're able to influence what you're going to do the next day, what you're not going to do, what you're going to buy, what you're not going to buy, like all these things. So me and Noah play two of like the first what they call dream influencers where we're going into people's dreams and influencing them to buy certain products <laughs> to go shit. and do certain stuff so like <laughs> dude it's a pretty doing, fun like, role TikTok because dances in there no, no but like oh, i get right. to make fun a little bit of like well, the tiktok stigma yeah. and myself and that's like, actually a great role for your first like movie so it was pretty fun like we we really got to like i think up the 
like I said, like stigma or like I kind of like what you would like put on what a, a normal TikToker is. You know what I'm saying? So that was that was really, really fun and like a great, I think, like first way to get into it. Um, but yeah, you've had worked, a good time. You've worked with some pretty cool people. You've worked with Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. Um, who would you say you like was somebody that you were very excited to work with and also had like great reviews afterwards? Like, oh, this guy was even better than I expected. Mm. That I like already worked with, just yeah, like anybody. Yeah, like, who, who's somebody who like caught you by surprise? Like, damn, this, this guy's like dope. Like, he's a really cool dude to hang out with. I mean, honestly, I'll give that to Noah. Noah, like, I don't know if you guys like remember, like, have seen any of his his movies or stuff. But like, you know, he started off on like The Fosters and then went from The Fosters and had like his big stuff on uh, Netflix. Like, to all the boys I loved before was That's like where that he, like, big blew one. up, right? Blew up, like blew up. I mean, like blew up. And then was in Black Adam recently, and yep. like, and by the way, he cr- like he crushed it in that movie. In Black Adam, yeah, I thought he was one of the best performance. The, like he the had movie a, sucked, but he had a good character. But he did great. His character was yep. awesome, and I thought it was really funny and um when we went down uh to toronto together uh to to film this movie like i had met him once very quickly um maybe like a year and a half prior to that and it was in like some sort of meeting and it was quick like 30 minutes you know and never really had talked since then um and i was sitting in the airport headphones on you know like i had my dog with me because i was bringing my dog back to canada because we were shooting in canada bring it back get let it chill with my family um and i was going to stay a little bit longer out there so you know i'm in the airport might be like a little stoned i'm like i don't really want to talk to anybody i just want to get to toronto after this six and a half hour flight you know like so i'm sitting there and i can see someone in my peripheral kind of doing the like (laughs) is that is that is that and i'm like i'm like you know what, if they ask for a photo, of course I'm going to say yes, but I'm just going to, you know, I'm just not going to look up. I'm going to mind my business, sit here, watch my anime on my phone right now. And Oh, I'm sorry, what anime? Uh, at the time, I was probably watching Attack on Titan because I was trying to catch up with my brother to get home and watch it together with Favorite him. anime? Uh-huh. Favorite? Um, Naruto. Naruto. No doubt. Dragon Ball Z. Look, look to I haven't. I haven't watched Dragon Ball Z. Thanks for watching, guys. What? I'll see you next time. Just imagine I get so bummed. That we're, we're changing that. I've watched that. a lot, and I haven't watched Dragon Ball Z. How like, the fuck have you I not know, watched Dragon I Ball know, Z? Bro? Dude, I do I know. not watch anime. Dragon Ball Z is the only anime I've ever watched. I've watched and it's so many. So good. That's I've the only reason I sleep with it. So many, and I I haven't watched this one yet. So it's I've watched Baki. You know, I've watched Seven Deadly Sins. I've watched Demon Slayer, Attack on Titan, Naruto. Um, I've watched. What's the fairy tale? I've watched uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. I've watched like I've watched so many animes, but and I haven't. Not Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> yeah, I know. So you're sitting there on your iPad watching a shit anime. Well, no. And what? Ha- and what? <laughs> a happened? great one. A great one. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm sitting there, and you know, he he calls up my name. He's like Josh, and I look up, and it's Noah, and he comes and he sits beside me, he starts chatting, and he's like, Yo, dude, what the heck? I haven't seen him forever. And I was like, Yeah, what's up, man? And he's like, So what are you doing here? Where are you going? I'm like, Oh, I'm going to Toronto. And I knew he was in the movie, but I don't think he knew that I was yet. Oh, yeah, so yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, I'm going, to, I'm going to Toronto. And he's like, no way, dude. Same. And I'm like, oh, really? What are you going for, to Toronto for? And I'm like <laughs> setting him up now, right? And he's like, oh, I'm going to go film this movie like Nick Cage is. And he's like telling me about it. He's getting all excited. I'm like, that's dope, dude. That is sick. He's like, what are you going for? And I'm like. Same thing. And he's like, no, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm playing across from you. And he's like, what? So then, like, instantly we end up, like, just, you know, like, having, like, a two-hour conversation. Our plane ends up getting delayed seven hours. Like, No way. Wow. Like, so long. So now me and Noah are stuck in the place that no one in the world wants to be stuck in, but we're stuck in it together. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're stuck in this together. So now we're going through this terrible experience together, but it's like making us closer. And we're just having all the time in the world to talk. It was very much like our playing conversation. Yeah, we were Yo, stuck in a plane. People at yeah, the I, made, I made so many people in there. <laughs> That's where I make my best friends. Yo, I just, just go hang out there. Who did you like spending time with more, me or Noah? <laughs> all right, guys. So we'll see you guys all next no, time. Get close um, <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, well, well fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, I liked you guys both. All right? No, I get I it. You guys he's both. talented and good looking he, and charming just, and you rich. You fall for his eyes, man. His he, eyes. No, just... I met him for a split second. Uh, he, he he was talking to Logan, and I was at a restaurant with him, and I saw him. He shook my hand, bro. When he shook my hand, if I was gay, 
Right. Hundred percent. I would try to go home with him. Then I don't right. know what it was, but like, you weren't, hair. and you even thought about it. A little for a split bit. second, yeah, 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 I was yeah, like, yeah. "What the <laughs> fuck is Belle doing with me right now? She could do so much better than me right now." <laughs> no, he was so kind, and like, is, it's cool to see somebody who's at, at their level of like really strong mm -hmm. success, but you could tell it's not affecting his heart. That's that's what I. That's why I think it was like just so cool to meet him and work with him and everything was because like. I was like, you had every right, you know, to even like look at me and be like, this kid fucking coming from TikTok trying to fucking steal yeah. our actors' jobs. What the fuck? Yeah. Um, and instead, yeah. he was like giving me all the advice in the world, wanting to have, like, not yeah. in like a place where he even like was like, this is how you have to do it, this is how you have to do it. But like, if I had questions, he was so excited to answer them. You know what I mean? And like, you could separate somebody great. who's like really talented and confident in their skill set mm -hmm. versus somebody who feels like they shouldn't even be there and that mm. they're lucky. Mm. And it, it's cool because there's, I'm not going to mention who it is, but there's guests that we have or situations we're a part of where it, it throws me off their their energy, but right. then when I meet somebody like Lamorne from like New Girl, right. uh, I thought about it for like four days in a row after he left because like it's not only somebody we watch, mm. but he was such a cool person. It it, it it's it's it stays with you way yeah. way way more hundred percent, and it kind of encourages you to do that. Like if somebody if somebody comes up to me ask me something, I I truly think of like how would Ross or or Chandler or Joey, what's the best thing that they could do to make me remember this for the rest of my right, life? So right. it's cool. I, I really like that people like you and Noah are, are not only killing it, but you guys have humble hearts and you guys keep oh, thank going. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you. Besides you not watching Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, I'll fix that. I'll yeah. fix that. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm almost done fairy tale, so I'll finish that and then. Fairy tale? Yeah. The fuck is that? It's It's an anime. It's about the magic world, wizarding world. It's really good. Did you grow up on Nickelodeon and Disney? Um, yeah. yeah. What was your favorite Nickelodeon show? What was your favorite Disney show? Oh, that's tough. Um, really? Mine's like, I could just fire them really? off. Really? Yeah. I don't know if I... Because I feel like the problem was is like I was a little bit too young. Like I was almost having to sneak watch Drake and Josh. What? Really? Right? Drake and Josh? Yeah. Because, I, I mean, like, my parents were pretty strict about TV. Well, let me get this straight. Your parents knew you snuck out of the house. They didn't know. I was good at doing it. But <laughs> Would it be sneaking if they knew? He was also much younger. Like, yeah, he wasn't but at what's the age with Drake and Josh? But he wasn't at the age where you were allowed to They're watch Nickelodeon yet. They're defying their parents in every yeah. episode. He wasn't at the age where he could watch Nickelodeon yet. Like, there were certain shows that was like, get you could watch in the morning time. Get out of here, bro. Dude, they're they're so they're the worst kids ever. Like, go look at that show again. They don't respect their parents at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? My parents are like, we don't want this shit going on in our house. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Okay, so so I mean, Nickelodeon to adult. What about yeah, Disney? Yeah, yeah, what was yeah. your favorite Disney show? Um, probably Sweet Life, or just Zach and Cody. Sweet yeah. Life of Zach and Cody, or Sweet Life on Deck. So I was like, I was probably coming up on like the last few seasons of just Zach and Cody before it switched to On Deck, but On Deck was not as good. I agree. What? You're, uh, you make uh, no sense. You make, no one uh, will agree with you, Georgie. No what? one will agree with you, I know. You think On Deck was better? On Deck was uh, not better. On it's deck, not. They, uh, it got too ch like, cheesy. What are you guys talking about, bro? What first, you of all, mean? first of all, respectfully, fuck both of your guys' opinion. Oh, you're you too young. Two no, no, against what, one. I don't yeah. give a shit, bro. I don't give a shit. He wants to change my lebna and doesn't know what Dragon Ball Z is. <laughs> and you, from the biblical terms, you're from my rib. So whatever I say, you say too. No. The original <laughs> Zach no, and no, Cody. No, no, <laughs> no. Well, there goes your theory. Well, hold on, hold on. Look at that. When you watch, like, okay, okay, sorry. Nick, uh, Disney only did four years. So when you saw that uh, Sweet Life ended, it, it breaks your heart because you're like, damn, bro, like, I grew up. When you're growing up with them, you're growing up with them. There yeah. was no social media stars or nothing. So growing up with Cole and Dylan, it was like, I, I, they were my only friends. Mm. And then they brought out a spinoff where it's them on a boat. You guys are crazy. That was the best thing. <laughs> and it was like, like I still watched it. You agree it. with him? No yeah. way. Bro. Because it's like you watched it because you missed Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, but you only watched it to fulfill that void. Not because yeah. Sweet Life on Deck was better. Yeah. That's crazy talk. That's crazy talk. Because I find that they found themselves on deck. Oh mm. my God. They got girlfriends. No. They start he's starting being a little bit more charismatic. I was like, this is no. what menhood looks like. And I was mm. adulting with them. Well, you the guys, best Nick, the best Nick show is Avatar the Last Airbender. 
<laughs> Fair enough. And can't it's get not, even, that. not, not even, even a competition. Yeah, 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 you can't debate I've watched that. that whole entire series probably like four times. Yep. And every time it's been like in like almost like a three to four year. It's like the Olympics for me. Yep. You know, every it's time like, the Olympics come like, on, like, I go and watch Avatar. It's kind of like, it's like Vampire Diaries during winter. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. You, right, right. you watch Vampire Diaries? I don't, but I'm assuming people watch it in the winter. <laughs> right, I right. watch Avatar. No, no, no. I got so right, excited. Right. I got so excited. <laughs> I got so excited. I saw it in your eyes and I didn't want to break your heart once again on this. Damn. So I was like, yeah, let me just watch it. So you don't them. know like the Damon and Stefan saga? Man, you know, uh, I... <laughs> It's not really something I watched a lot. Oh, no. dude. Yeah. Anybody who watches Vampire Diaries know that like, for some reason, mm-hmm. when it starts getting a little chilly out, you're it's like, the fall time. what are these vampires up to? Oh. And, like, it's just okay. Elena, but then you don't yeah. know if it's Elena or the other bitch. Catherine? Yeah. Ooh. You don't you don't know. I don't know. I'm okay, sorry. okay. Since you guys asked me, my favorite Disney <laughs> <laughs> My favorite Disney has to be Hannah Montana, bro. Mm. Mm. That's good. You know what That's I mean? Good. I have yeah, yeah, two yeah. way too many. Like oh, wait, I'm not done. My favorite Nickelodeon. Okay. iCarly. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes How sense. How do you yeah. dude iCarly was our life, dude? iCarly is sweet. No, but if you look at it, it was our life. Yeah, yeah. That's weird, right? Like it you, is weird. When you were watching that growing up, you're like, what? She just creates videos online? Yeah, what? And That's now we're so, doing it. You know what's funny that. is that Nice. iCarly, I for, did. <laughs> iCarly for you guys was like your like reality because it's like you guys were making videos, right? But then like for me it was victorious because they I thought were, you were gonna say Spencer and you're like he, he's the Carly running around crazy and you're like having to make sure he's I'm like Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> I am always making art projects. I am Spencer. There you go. She is. See? She's she's See? an artist. But no, dude. But victorious was like because it was the arts in the school and that's how my school was because like when I was in high school in Canada I auditioned. For, it was like an art school. Yeah. Yep. So it was like that for me. Victorious is my favorite on Nickelodeon because it was. Did you watch that? Uh, yeah, a little bit, a little Victoria, bit. It was, it was. They had like the written. pair phones and everything. Yeah, right? yeah Victorious yeah, is yeah, so yeah. good. We actually watched it recently. To this day, it's still good when you watch it. All right, and it's, it, it does. It holds its weight. <laughs> it holds good. its weight. That's good. What about you cartoon? What about cartoon? Like I know well, Avatar, but I'm talking like yeah. Rugrats, like back in oh, the day stuff. Like, um, Rugrats was. He wasn't around during that time. Rugrats. My parents had like I. I had like a VCR until I was like seven. Yeah, Jess. so like I was still like you know rewinding that shit. Jessica's almost it. forty, but so like, she's like, <laughs> she really just thinks of us like we're like that separated. Yeah, no, I I I knew my Rugrats. I I watched my Rugrats. It was great. I think another one that was pretty fire when I Can was younger. Can I guess younger, it? Can Scooby- I guess it? Scooby Doo. Okay, nice guess. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. Nice. 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 <laughs> nice, 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 nice. What were you gonna guess? Uh, uh, honestly, w- Wild Thornberry. Or what is it? Uh, what? Wild Thornberry? What, what show was the Wild, Wild Thornberry? Like, you don't remember that guy? Yeah, from Rugrats? No, Wild Thornberry. Oh, I remember a guy from Rugrats that was always like. <laughs> 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 I guess that was like Nickelodeon's thing. Yeah, but like, yeah, 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 yeah. That was like he was just like I don't know what he was. I don't know if they adopted him, but he was like just this guy. He was like a little baby. And he was like, <laughs> what was his name? <laughs> Look at you, bro. Dang. Me and you, and you are vibing today. Me and you are vibing today. He's what? Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers played Donnie. Whoa. Shut up. That's crazy. Huh. And not only do I feel like we're vibing, but I feel like you're just adding to the things that make me happy. Which I now I can walk away being happier that I know that. <laughs> That's One other question. What is Red Hot Chili Peppers? What? Stop. Come uh, on. Is that a show? You're embarrassing that yourself, babe. You're no. embarrassing yourself, babe. You're embarrassing yourself, whoa, 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 babe. Whoa, 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 whoa. I really feel like I dropped the fucking ball <laughs> here. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. It has to be cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so embarrassing. Even I know. It, I know. Oh, so it's, yeah. a, it's a newer, it's an older no. thing. It's, it's an, an older no. thing. Hold on, hold on. Well, first of all. I really feel like everybody's upset with me. I just want everybody to know. I, it's, oh, wait, their music? Their music. Their music? Oh, that's a rock Question band. Mark? You know their songs for the sure. The only rock band I ever played was, like, obviously, Jonas Brothers. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. Under the bridge. Under the bridge. You're, what about you're Hold On? Me. Hold On. That was good, huh? That was good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is an SOS. You know, same like, like, like a, that. Like that's talent. He can actually do a really good Joe Jonas impression. Yeah, thank you. Do it. Hey, I'm Joe Jonas. No, that was terrible. <laughs> that was one of the sing, worst impressions bro. I've ever I'm heard. I'm on the spot, babe. You know I can only do that when I'm naked. Anyways, so. <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, okay, but the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Is that is that the, uh, hold on. Before, Don't bring it back, Is dude. it the California song? 
That, that, that is one of their songs. Yeah. See, I know. <laughs> See, I know. <laughs> I feel like I really dropped the ball. I had it like really high. I should have right. walked away. And then I messed we up. We hit with our the, ceiling. With the, and, with yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> Fair That's enough. That's all good. Uh, for those of you uh, that don't know who the Red Hot Chili Peppers are, never tell anybody. <laughs> never tell anybody. Just <laughs> nod. Yeah. And smile. Be like, yeah. yeah. Thanks for watching, listening, and subscribing. I'll see you next time on The George Janko Show. That's our theme song. That that's sick. I'm just kidding. I actually <laughs> missed a button. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's dope. Every time you do that? <laughs>